thank you all for being here. I see quite a lot of people. I see Dai, Jimmy, I see Advait, Ashkan, Janak, Mahdi, Terish, Shashank, Summit, and Jackson, Ritvik. Pardon me if I'm reading your names wrong. Thanks a lot for being here. Uh, my name is Mohammed. I'm a fifth year student at this lab. Siam is the most senior in our lab. Um, so our lab has different uh, topics for research. One of them is machine learning and hardware acceleration. Other one is secure function evaluation. We also have quite a bit of work in um, robustness of machine learning algorithms. Also, we have Wheelie who is working on um, IP protection of machine learning. You know, Jan is here. He is working on zero knowledge proofs. Siam is responsible for most of the security related projects. Xin Xiao just started his PhD last year, if I'm correct. He is helping Huili with a lot of stuff in robustness of deep learning. Um, we have Shazin here who is working on um, adversarial attacks. And um, specifically, um, she's working on um, robustness of machine learning models in general settings and also in um, speech recognition data and hardware acceleration for all of those. Let me see if I missed um, anything. So yeah, in general, we have those three um, different topics of research in our group. And um, you have, if, you have, if you have any questions, we can you know, answer to you about anything, not just about the research. If you have questions about housing or you know, how it goes in San Diego, how is it like to be here? Like what, like Siam said, it's really good. It's a really good city to live in, but unfortunately, you do not. Many of you do not have the opportunity to come here right now because of the current COVID situation. So yeah, go ahead and uh, ask any questions you might have. Um, I had a quick question um, about the research group. Um, I'm Justin, by the way. Nice to meet everyone. Mm -hmm. Nice um, you. I was just, you mentioned like the two or three um, different like research areas. Um, is there like collaboration like between those research areas? Or are they kind of more a little bit independent? Um, no, there's actually a lot of collaboration. Like uh, I mostly work with privacy. Mohammed works with security. I think just about a week ago, we submitted a paper to Usenix uh, where three of us collaborated. It was about yeah, privacy preserving of, machine like, learning. That's kind of the strength of our lab. Like uh, if you go to any other lab, they usually focus on some specific topic, but in our lab, you would have access to people with different abilities. And because of that, if you look at the, in some of our papers, there's usually a co-optimization of different aspects. Like in the case that Siam mentioned, we both have machine learning and security at the same time people from both um, you know, backgrounds, then we always work together in most of the projects. That's really cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, I, can, I can provide some insight. On, so I just started my PhD this year. Um, and so um, I think the one thing that this lab really contributed is you can sort of get started really fast and your first few projects are going to be, you'll kind of be able to find your footing and see what you really like within the lab because we have such a diverse uh, array of topics in the lab. Uh, you're really able to sort of test things out and see where you like it. So right now, um, my first uh, paper submission was with Siam and Xinxiao and we were working on hardware security stuff. So using FPGAs and stuff like that um, and like secure communication methods. And then my project right now um, is zero knowledge proofs, which is a lot more security focused, but I'm also working on another project with CM and a few others in the lab that is more machine learning heavy. So it, um, you really like this lab is really good because you aren't so locked in on one thing because it's possible that you join a lab and you're they're locked in on one thing that you don't like so you kind of 
have that flexibility coming in. And I mean, yeah, like I just started here in June, so I've been able to work on a lot. And uh, another thing uh, probably, which I think is unique to our lab that we will get a lot of independence. Uh, it Usually people like it a lot. It may not be good for some people, but what I like about this lab is uh, finers usually don't ask us to do something specific. She defines a very broad area and we are free to choose our own project. And it happens very rarely that uh, she asks us not to work on a project. Most of the time, if, if we find an interesting project that we like to work on, uh, she would help us with that one instead of like telling us specific things that we, sh we should work on. Let's see if you have more questions about anything, not just the group or even about the group. I guess I can give a little bit since um, if you have more questions. So yeah, I joined the lab, I think 2017. And uh, I remember also coming to the PhD recruitment, which was back then in person. Uh, so yeah, if you guys have questions regarding housing or like how the lab is or how our work is, um, there's definitely, um, I think hopefully like things when they're not remote, you're gonna be able to visit the lab, but we are working remotely a lot these days. Um, and yeah, I think one of the great things about our lab is we, uh, we are able to work collaboratively with a lot of people. Um, and we also like uh, do internships over the summer and then kind of do research um, during the academic years. Um, so, you know, you have a lot of flexibility about what you want to work on. Um, and, you know, you have that kind of time, I guess, for the first year when you're like kind of exploring different ideas and different topics. Um, I myself, I think I was looking a lot into different kinds of speech processing systems and then kind of gone into adversarial machine learning a lot. So yeah, if, um, if you guys have like any questions and things like that, we're happy to answer them. And I actually wanted to do kind of a survey. Since you guys are here, you probably have interest in at least one of the topics of our lab. I was wondering, which one or two topics interested you the most? You could use the chat section for that. Yeah, someone raise their hand. Let's let's talk. It's easier. Okay. I think that was me, Siam. Should I go ahead? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I uh, I mean I'm into uh, some research in privacy preserving machine learning too, and then I just got That's into awesome. it over the uh, last year. And uh, so technically my background is in signal processing, pure signal processing. But I was just wondering, I mean, there is a lot of, uh, and I love math a lot. And then I've seen that there is a lot of math heavy work in the uh, lab. So that actually drew me towards the lab and That's specifically true. developing uh, new crypto tools and uh, trying to make them work and practical, right? So that is yeah. the... That Yeah, that is the most important aspect of it. And one thing which I observed and I wanted to actually ask you guys, one of you guys is, why not work on some homomorphic encryption type protocols? Because every the, everybody else seems to be working on some accelerator design or something on homomorphic encryption. So, No, we actually don't... started work on, working on this. We have a project sponsored by Samsung. And okay. part of it is uh, designing uh, accelerator for homomorphic encryption. Oh, and we nice. are also working on mixed protocol solutions. Like uh, there are different protocols and all of them have different capabilities. And in an actual practical system, you probably need to mix a lot of them. So yeah, sure. right now, I mean, we started with Gerbil circuit, then we focused on MPC for about three, four years. But right yeah. now we switched the focus to homomorphic encryption uh, or mixed protocol solutions. Uh, they are not visible right now because uh, we did not reach a stage to prepare for a publication. But okay. if you Thank join you. the lab, you'll see. Uh, okay. There are at least two projects on HE. Sure, sure, sure. 
I just and, let uh, someone else go ahead, actually. But yeah, that was the most important part of, uh, I mean, the most interesting part of the lab that actually drew me, trying to make this complicated stuff practical, right, and usable yeah. in uh, day-to-day life. Yeah, that is super interesting. Yeah, Thank you. If so that actually any of you is uh, like worried about your background, my background was in digital design. I never thought I would work on privacy. But yeah, eventually I'm getting my PhD on privacy. I and so think. Shashank, that actually, uh, um, the, the zero knowledge proof project that I'm working on right now is like, I think you would also find very interesting because that's very math heavy, uh, very crypto heavy. And um, uh, again, like, like Siam was saying, my background, I got my PhD or my bachelor's in computer engineering and mainly just did like embedded system stuff in undergrad. And um I mean, I'm still like only six months into this PhD, so I haven't really fully adapted, but I'm getting there. And I think having the lab and Farina's, like Farina's gives you very good general advice and like a, like a broad overview of what you should be doing. And she will go in depth if you need her to. But um, I think the good thing about this lab is Farina's gives you the path that you need to go on. And then you have several talented people in the lab that are actually there to like, lead you where to go so like Siam for me was like the one that he like led me through my first project and got me through everything there so we have a good network here I thought GB raised hands right um uh, I was just going to introduce myself um, I'm Jimmy Hi. I'm interested in sort of the software hardware co-design so I'm my, my goal is sort of to do something um in, involving like machine learning and double E. I've got a couple um, potential fields I'm interested in. So sort of the, the embedded machine learning type stuff stood out to me with this lab. That's okay. good. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, we do have a lot of projects in that domain. Uh, we used to have more projects, but these days, mostly our accelerators are towards um, robustness of machine learning because that area has been saturated. If you look at um, if you look at the literature, acceleration of machine learning itself has been saturated. So nowadays we're mostly working on accelerating robustness um, of machine learning. And it's almost the same stuff, like um, the tools that you work with and, you know, the general framework is the same, but it's more, you know, unique and nobody has touched upon those areas. So if you look at some of like um, adversarial attack algorithms or uh, Trojan attack algorithms, they're basically doing the same operations as in a deep network, deep neural network, but you need accelerators for, for those kind of stuff. And nowadays you have a lot of focus on in those. And of course we have a lot of people um, in the group that can help you with that to just get started on a project that is, you know, um, reasonable for you to work on. And if you, if you are afraid of theory, um, I just wanna add that we do have people who can collaborate with you and take responsibility for those parts of the work. So it's not like you're gonna be exposed to a lot of theory and a lot of weird stuff that you don't know in the beginning of your PhD. So you would have a pace by pace, you know, um, collaboration with somebody who can put you in the path. And on top of everyone, you can always go talk to, talk to the advisor and, you know, find your best interest. And Mohammed, you Which, may want to talk about the collaboration with Tara a little bit. Oh, Someone yeah, actually asked in the chat. Oh, Question answered. collaboration with Professor Tara, for example. Yeah, that's Willie. Yeah. Yeah, that's Willie. may not be comprehensive. Yeah, but we do have two projects that are mentioned in the chat. Yeah. At yeah, least yeah, two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we do have collaborations with other professors too. Like as Willie mentioned, we have collaborations with Tara. We have um, collaborations on Trojan detection. We have for in wireless setting. We also have had some a collaboration on, on black box optimization for um, parameter selection. So if you look at some of our papers, you see that, you know, most of the time, the, um, the, the um, 
prominent thing about our papers compared to other groups is that it's some kind of interdisciplinary research. Like if we do have machine learning acceleration, we do have some parts of algorithmic design or theory inside it too. If we, do, if we have, you know, theory for a new security protocol, we do have acceleration on top of that, or we do have some tricks from the machine learning side accompanied by that. And all of this is, is achieved by collaboration either between the students in the lab or collaboration with other professors. Uh, okay, Junbu's question about security solution needed for on-device AI. Yeah, the reason most of the uh, applications on cloud-based security uh, is concerned about security is that your data is actually leaving your device. But if uh, the AI model is on device, the only uh, problem uh, that can occur is probably side channel attacks. And yeah, I don't think right now we have any project on side channel attack, right? I don't think so. We was most... working with, with some some student who works worked on SGX, if I correctly remember. Yeah. Yeah. On T. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, but uh... that could be that's like the most relevant topic in this domain. But we finished that project like a year ago, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but. Maybe you can explain a little more. I mean, what kind of security do you think we may need in on for on device AI? Maybe side channel attack is not the only thing on your mind, right? For security solutions, I, I think uh, if I remember correctly, uh, besides side channel attack, like uh, fault injection can also happen. So, for example, once you map a neural network to a hardware. Uh, they can use uh, strategies such as raw hammer attack to change the parameter of the neural network to degrade its accuracy. And that's also one possible security threats we can uh, resolve on the device level. Yeah, and about the question about processing in memory, we actually submitted a proposal uh, to Intel that's recently been accepted. Yeah, and we plan to explore processing in memory for some of the accelerator for uh, privacy preserving federated learning. So if you are actually interested in that one, yeah, we do have a good project for you. Mm -hmm. and and I we have a lot of work that, on... um, that there's a pr new, new professor, um, his name is Mingu. He is um, beginning, I think he, his plan was to work uh, on ASIC uh, acceleration for machine learning. And I believe that there is going to be collaboration between our group and his. So joining joining this group will not be, you know, even if we do not have a lot of people who work with ASIC, we do collaborate with others that uh, allow you to work on the topics that you would like. Yeah, and also we have a lot of work on FPG acceleration. Maybe we can start with that one. ASIC, yeah, we probably will not go that far. Yeah. We are actually running out of time. Maybe we have time for one last question. Or if some of you want to hang around for more, that's also fine unless you want to go to some other adversary okay, Justin is asking projects. about that. I think that's Shazin, right? Are you still here? Yeah, is uh, I'm here, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're uh, looking at different areas of adversarial attacks and defenses. Uh, recently, we just got a paper accepted to Usenix, which is about defending against audio adversarial attacks. Uh, some of these can be like you know, cloud-hosted APIs or even on device. Uh, so particularly looking at deep uh, neural network based uh, speech recognition models. Um, and other than that, we have also done uh, several attacks on both speech recognition and also video. So like we have a paper that's uh, adversarial deep fakes, uh, which are kind of showing what are some of the vulnerabilities and deep fake detection systems that are out there. Uh, so all of these are like some of the applications in ML 
Uh, we've also done some work in text-based uh, machine learning models as well, and also demonstrating what are some of the security attacks and vulnerabilities that we see there. Uh, so yeah, we're constantly looking at this problem and uh, we're developing new solutions. Um, so yeah, it's a very relevant ongoing uh, area. We are also funded on this side from DARPA. So we're working at, on adversarial ML um, or DARPA and some projects in that area. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's really cool how there's many different like areas that like adversarial machine learning like, can be a problem in. So uh, yeah, thanks for sharing that. No problem. All right, I think we are running out of time, but um, if any of you has more questions and wants to you know, go in, into a more in-depth discussion with any of the members in, in this um, talk, just feel free to email us. Um, you can go to our website. I mean, it's, it's a bit outdated, but you could find our emails in the website. Um, or I can ask, or we can ask the professor to send you Oh yeah, let's let's put the emails in the chat section. And if you have any questions and want to go to into more in-depth discussion, just let us know. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So if any of you guys easier. are having like, uh, if any of you guys have questions about starting grad school in COVID or anything, or sort of getting started with the lab in general, I can definitely help out with that because I've been through all that this year. Um, yeah, and, and also I I which courses to take and which courses not to take. Yeah. <laughs> because I remember the first year students complained about a lot about some courses yeah. in the middle of the I was, one of them said I hate my life because don't take that course. <laughs> yeah it's definitely there more are... important to know which courses not to take yeah yeah because it can make you miserable yep. okay I think if no one else have more questions we can end this here or we can hang around for more questions if you want. Okay. Let's wait for like three more minutes so that everybody could copy the emails because once yeah. we finish the Zoom session, it will be gone. No, I think none of us is the That's host. True. We can just leave. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I, and I, I, okay, go ahead. I, uh, I, saw, I, uh, I saw that there is the one uh, student who is mostly interested in working with Tara. And actually I am, yeah, I am, uh, mm, yeah, I am having a regular meeting and I am advised by the Professor Tara. So maybe if you have any questions specifically about prof uh, working with Professor Tara, can, you can, yeah, mail me. <clears throat> Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming yeah. to this session. I hope we asked your uh, answered your question, and I hope you um, find this information helpful. Let us know if you have any more questions later. Have a good day for now. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you.